You're listening to Tabletop Arcanum, a podcast dedicated to learning and exploring the hobby of tabletop gaming. Your hosts are Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, so sit back and relax as we talk, discuss, and joke our way through the hobby we love so much. tiny town in the forest where the smaller creatures of the woods have created a civilization hidden away from predators. This new land is small and the resources are scarce. You take what you can get and never say no to building materials. Cleverly plan and construct a thriving town and don't let it fill up with wasted resources. Whoever builds the most prosperous tiny town wins. Use resources, construct buildings, and build your town. Welcome to Tabletop Arcanum. We're your hosts, Justin and Ricky. Today we're talking about tiny towns. So this is put out by AEG, designed by Peter McPherson. One to six players, plays about 45 minutes. MSRP is $39.99, and it's an interesting little game. First impressions, it's not tiny, but there's a lot of tiny pieces. Yeah, lots of wooden pieces, lots of cute, colorful art. The game box is like bright, colorful, kind of looks like, well, you've got the woodland creatures, so it's kind of like the Red Wall Forest, but as if Red Wall Forest was like a neat little town in Switzerland, tucked away in the Alps, and this is what they built, opposed to like the horrifying like medieval fantasy that Red Wall really is. So it's cards and it's wooden stuff. That's it. The cards themselves are nice linen finish. The rule books are on the thin side, but that's because there's not much to the rules. Because most of the mechanics are actually on the cards, because it's just how do you score is like the biggest real mechanic that you're dealing with. And then it's a ton of wooden pieces to support six players building their tiny towns. So first impressions, there's a lot of stuff in this box, but there's also not a lot of stuff in this box at the same time. I'm like conflictedly confused by this game as I learned it and we played it. And in an I say conflicted, but in like a good way. It kept defying my expectations somehow. I'm going to say about the same thing. It was very intimidating looking at it at first. And then once you actually break it down and put everything out, it's a very, very simple game. There's a lot of art of all these animals and everything all over everything. When you get down to the nitty gritty of it, you don't see any of them during the game. You just see wooden pieces. Yep. A lot of flavor on the box that is missed when we get to the game, but I don't think I necessarily miss it. I think the game still stands up on its own without having all that added in. Yeah, it sits in a weird, like, it's an American style game because it's very thematic, but the mechanics are, like, powered by a Euro game. So it feels Euro while you play, but there's this theme and this thing tied through it, and there's a little bit of player interaction, kind of a player got you in some of the mechanics. So it leans more American, but it has a lot of Euro influence. And that's not a bad thing. It's just you need to set your expectations going into the game that that's what you're playing. All the art's like beautiful. It's cute. It's fun. It's colorful. I like it. Kind of keeps me happy playing. All of the buildings that you put out there are nice wooden buildings. And they're color-coded and they're shape-coded so you can actually see what everyone's doing. The only time we ever really had a problem is I think it's the cottages and the taverns are shaped similar. Similarly, when you shrink it down to an icon on a card, it's similar enough that if you're not paying attention, you could misread it. That's just an uh, early thing. Once we understood, like, oh, that's what this is doing, it was easier, but it was one of those things like, is that referring to this building or that building? Is that a, a, a teal or is that a green? I can't right. really tell underneath this light. And the shape of the building isn't too distinctive from each other, so those are the two toughest things to ID between each other. And for those who are on the red-green colorblind spectrum, I can see that even being more tricky because it is teal and green. So what does Tiny Towns do well? I would say that it does get you thrown into the game real quick. It is very simplistic that way that, like you said, the manual isn't that big as well as it doesn't have a whole lot of rules that aren't pretty much explained in a round or two. It's an eight page rule book. The first page is just a giant splash art and like, here's what you're trying to do. There's one page dedicated to a variant game and solo. There's two pages that are just kind of clarifications on some of the cards so if the card isn't like leaving you a little bit like i'm not exactly sure what this is truly meaning they got a little bit more deeper explanation on them and then yeah like it's two pages of here's a big picture of how to set it up and the core game rules are on two pages that's it which is great i love it because i love games that are i can teach us in like 10 minutes or less mm -hmm. i want to get in the game and not have a heavy rules download now this also kind of works against it because without a heavy rules download or or not seeing the game in play 
play, your first game will be one of those like stumbling around in the darkness a little bit, trying to figure out how the mechanics are playing and then not really having an optimized tiny town. But that's the nature of it. And ideally, if you're playing with a bunch of new people at the same time, everybody's kind of stumbling around in the dark together. That's not a bad thing. It's just one of those, you got to see the mechanics in, in play and then you can start film, forming your strategies around it. I do also like that they have these resource cards in here. If you're playing solo, you can keep busting them out. It'll give you what resources you're working with, as well as you were telling me that AEG has had... Tiny Towns at Noon. During the COVID pandemic quarantine, they've actually been streaming at noon Pacific time through their social media, and you can play along with a copy of Tiny Towns. It's a nice, fun way. You can meet people at AEG. You can interact with them socially through the chat and stuff like that but then they're playing the game with you and it's just who can do the best tiny town in that way with that particular variant that they're playing there's really no limit to the number of people who can play tiny towns you just have to have the game board and the pieces to mark what you're doing i'm actually interested in seeing what their highest number has been but they've been doing that regularly monday through friday they've been mixing it up with some other games just to kind of give a little variety of we they've played 100 games of tiny town but they haven't only played tiny town <laughs> I think it's a wonderful game. Every game is going to be completely different. A lot of variety, a lot of interesting strategy, a lot of interesting choices throughout the game. I always felt while playing that there was something to do. I was working towards something or I was like, okay, this is not a resource I can use right now. Where can I put it where it's not going to mess me up later? What would you say are some of the opportunities the game has? I think some of the opportunities from the core game are addressed in the expansion. My core game problems are more of, there are sometimes you get stuck with someone saying glass six times in a row. Hey, Justin. Hey. And you're literally trying to, like, shove it in corners to try to deal with it and can't. The rest of your game kind of gets side railed based on that. It's interesting to see how different players interact with each other because you can have the player who is not necessarily sacrificing their turn, but calling a resource or calling their turn in such a way to be deterrent to other players rather than what is their optimal choice. I want to see this with a lot more variety of players. We didn't get the chance to play with six players. I would love to see what this game's like with six. We'll probably organize some online games for that. Yeah, when it's just one-on-one, -on -one, we're looking at what's on your board, what's on my board. I can kind of already tell what you're building. I'm going to either call out things that you don't need, if you're going to call out something that I do need, or I'm going to try to mess up whatever you're building by calling out completely random stuff that will just fill your town with stuff that you can't use. You don't want to use or screws up your building plans. It's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just a different way of approaching the game, but I can see that turning off some players for yeah. sure. Now, let's talk about the MSRP on Tiny Towns. This is a $40 MSRP. I think it's definitely worth it. You do get a lot in the core box. You get a lot of wood. Oh, yeah. I'm glad it's all wooden pieces. I'm glad it's not plastic. Yeah, definitely. It feels like a classic game, and th that's what I really dig about it. Honestly, and this is the silliest thing, and you and I don't necessarily agree on this part all the time. You always look to games for how compact can it get. Is it too much box for as little mm -hmm. game? This has a lot of stuff in it. It has a lot of space for it. It also fits the expansion nicely in it because you're adding another score pad. You're adding a little bit of wooden tokens. And you're adding some cards, which it had space for. It was designed with a little future-proofing in mind. So overall, I was very impressed with Tiny Towns. I think it has a wonderful point in a collection. I think it also has a nice market because it goes up to six players too. Who would you recommend this for? People who like Euro games with a little more flair. I'm reminded a lot of like Ticket to ride where you're kind of doing your own thing you can inadvertently screw over the other players but at the end of the day you're focusing on your own thing trying to make it work okay i would personally recommend this for people who like between two cities if you like a puzzly game you're trying to manage your own resources with mm. and if you like trying to puzzle out how to pack everything into a very small box <laughs> If, if that sounds appealing to you, you probably enjoy Tiny Towns. Of like, okay, how can I think my way out of this? How can I put this in such a way where I will free up space in a, like a turn or two and then be able to build more? If those sorts of puzzles intrigue you, Tiny Towns is definitely going to be up your alley. You have to uh, constantly be thinking in Tetris, trying to figure out... Twisting, spatial, complex things. And uh, that'll lead into the, if that is not your thing, 
you are probably going to not like Tiny Towns. Yeah. Or not do well at Tiny Towns, at least. Mm Mm-hmm. I think it's a good rounded game. I don't think there's a lot of people that I wouldn't suggest it to. It's not that I wouldn't suggest it. I would suggest caution mm-hmm. for kids. Yes. It looks like it could be a kid's game with how fun, colorful animals and things like that. It looks more family friendly than I think it might actually be. Not to say that you can't, but I would definitely listen to our review, watch some videos, like do a little bit of research before just picking this mm-hmm. one up for the family. If you've got like a mixed age group. So that's our review of Tiny Towns. I hope you enjoy it. As always, we have our social medias that you can follow. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We're streaming on Twitch, which then goes to YouTube. And if you want live updates, make sure to go to your local tavern and order kale with a silent K. This has been Justin. And Ricky. Happy gaming. You've been listening to Tabletop Arcanum, hosted by Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, and featuring the original music by Paul Moore and Isaac Gilbert. You can follow us on most social media platforms. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a review on whatever platform you listen to podcasts. As always, thanks for listening.